Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Chasing Edges podcast. I'm your host, Brian Peters. Got an absolute big brain on today, very wise human, Dr. Charlie Weingroff. He is a doctorate of physical therapy, but just a man of many hats, a very wise human with a phenomenal resume in pro athletics. But he was one of the trailblazers in bringing in proper evaluation and assessment tactics. So there's a bunch of knowledge bombs on here for both coaches and athletes to take into the assessment evaluation phase of your training or your programming and we start to break that down into categories movement sensory systems all the above it's a very fun conversation but i think the emphasis we spend almost an hour on the conversation for coaches to evaluate their systems for physical therapists to evaluate their systems and and specifically athletes when you're stepping into a new program where you're starting to collect more doctors and support staff for yourself and your body what questions to ask what to look for and how to properly step into and optimize yourself in a sequential order with the complete understanding of the system. I learned so much on the podcast, and I hope you absolutely enjoy. Bam. All right. Charlie, thanks for joining me. My man. Dude, I'm, I'm pumped to talk to you. Um, let me turn my mic down just it's, a little bit. It's, but it's been a while since I saw you, since you guys show up at the gym in New York unannounced all the time. <laughs> dude, that, uh, I, I love that uh, Don Saladino's gym. Uh, what was it, Drive 45, is that what it's called? Drive, Drive 495, yeah. We, uh, we closed it in, um, I don't know the years because everybody, like, we, we all lost a year of our lives. But it was, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure it was September of 20. Okay. Um, and uh, the lease ran out, so Don was in a great, great situation. So, um, but yeah, whenever you guys were in town uh, and Allie was asking me when she brought me over, it's like, no, no, they would come to the gym all the time. I, I've met Brian before a couple of times, but, uh, but then I get mad at B because I'm like, yeah, you can come, but you have to tell me when you're going to yeah. come. <laughs> well, me, me and Scarlett, uh, Brennan Scarlett, who's also been on the podcast as well. Um, we, uh, we have a, a habit of making last minute travel decisions like we went to brazil on 36 hours notice and then the new york trips um one he kind of went with the intention to see you i think even if he didn't tell you or not it just became merging the worlds but um no that gym was awesome just uh it was cool well like the like small world um and charlie just was uh hanging out with dr serrano who's also a regular on the podcast but he um I walk into the gym and uh, Scarlett went back to go and see uh, you guys in the back and Don's at the front counter taking the uh, MR100 and the muscle synthesis mm. and I give him like the, oh, wait, wh- where'd you get that from? And then just uh, kind of just started shooting off about the supplements and Dr. Strong and everything. So just small anybody, anybody who's, uh, who's, who's carrying uh, some muscle and, and looks fit yeah, yeah is it, like... Don, Don just wants to talk to you. Like, yeah. like he, he's trying to pick up something or it's like, uh, you know, when you're walking down the street and it's like, you just give somebody a head nod. Like, so yeah. anybody who's fit, a little bit jacked, Don, Don wants to hear about it. He wants to, he wants to connect. Yeah. But yeah, that, uh, I, I, he just was a juicy human and that it's something I'd always respect in anybody. And then obviously he's training his face off there too. But, um, yeah, dude, that gym was beautiful. Like it just, I didn't expect to like go up the elevator to see that in yeah, Manhattan. Yeah. So it was people, cool. people would say, number one, it was clean. Yeah. So, so for instance, uh, um, Ozzy was the name of the Porter or whatever we would call him. So he basically had a list of however many things and his job all day would be to go around. So once he finished number 15, he would just go back to one, whether it was dirty or not. And just keep it going. Aside if there was anything you need to do. So that was number one. Number two was people would say it was like a family type atmosphere because it it wasn't like this big box gym. Like everybody kind of knew everybody. And there's probably different iterations of the gym. I don't remember when you guys would come. It was probably over a period of several years. But you're not there all the time, so you wouldn't really notice if those things. But the other one would be like, between me and Don, you do get a chance to rub elbows with celebrities and professional athletes. Yeah. So uh, even even if somebody didn't know who you and Brennan were, you're like, okay, well you're six three two forty. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. But oh, they must be with Charlie. Or Carry the two. Yeah. The, Those well, are Charlie's guys. One 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 morning, uh, it doesn't matter who they were, but let's say there was probably 1200 pounds of, of human beings and then people walk in and be like oh my like yeah so you have like uh because they were all linemen big bodies yeah yeah, yeah. so it's uh that was uh it's a, a very a special place i i think at some point 
it had to be before 2016 because uh, then the gym kind of culture changed a little bit. But so maybe 14, we were voted probably, I think, the sixth best gym in New York City. But it was the first that wasn't commercially run. Okay. It was the only kind of mom and pop type yeah, gym. Private gym. Yeah, like they would life. put equinox and like lifetime and they they were somehow ranked but we we had the we were recognized and there was a lot of really i mean don don uh married Allie and i yeah so i mean there was it's a fun video that that uh you know scripted and everything and and actually uh scarlett johansson who don introduced me to helped me write the script for our ceremony. Let's go. Because it was completely farcical. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing, because we had gotten married before the pandemic. Uh, you know, it's a regular ceremony, yeah, like, just, you know, on the beach somewhere. The good old days, yeah. And then we didn't have the party for like a year and a half. Oh, damn. So, but I wanted to do this anyway, because I wanted, I wanted the, I wanted our party to be for other people. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't care. Like, if we didn't do it for me, it didn't matter. And then... It was the first time a lot of people got to do go out, yeah, or or be a com commune, you know, was would be a word that a lot yeah, of particularly in yeah. New York City for sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, long story short, we were making believe that there was we forgot the officiant, yeah. And Don took his jacket off because he was in the wedding party, and then he wound up Let's marrying us. Yeah. So we we can put a link to the to like the some video, of the videos, yeah. Okay. yeah. But the, al along with um, the the dinosaur that was there, the gorilla, uh, the two drag queens, one of which was seven feet tall, uh, <laughs> the the theme music that everybody had. So it was uh, just a, a spectacular presentation. It would have been uh, a show. Ten, ten year old birthday party for adults. Okay, yeah, so there that we go. That's so dynamite. Don, Don is hands down one of my best friends and uh, that's why I don't mind spending a few minutes here to, to talk about because a lot of things I have in my life is because of you know the what that gym that, that we're talking about brought brought to all of us. Yeah, that's awesome and that's well just cool to see like again you have fun with an event like a wedding where like I, some people take that incredibly ridiculously seriously mm -hmm. where like it really is just like a it should be a celebration it should be fun it shouldn't be this crazy maybe not it's crazy like you're you're the story you're saying is crazy but i just i like people that approach the those celebrations that way well the uh for people that know me uh, uh i carry myself somewhat juvenile it's just you know, I I can I can handle myself. Uh, I I've squatted 800 pounds. I'm allowed to. Yeah. Uh, I would say when you squat 800 pounds, you're allowed to be an adult that that still cares about Pokemon. Yeah. So we. Um, I can do what I want. There was there was uh, the 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 sushi that was at the wedding. If you once people took it, there was like a Mickey Mouse mural behind it. So oh. like everything was Disney, Transformers, like uh, um, you know, wrestling, you know, dinosaur. When we walked in, uh, it had the Jurassic Park gate. I was gonna say you got uh, you got some uh, uh, some Serrano undertones. You even got the superhero T-shirt on. You oh yeah, that, like, yeah, he didn't because uh, when he he knew Allie, he knew my wife, yeah. but he didn't know me. And he also didn't know that I, I can speak fluent Spanish. The, oh. So so it's like we hit it off. That's pretty, a deal well. sealer yeah, for we him. Had, yeah, we hit it off pretty you're well. His, you're his boy then. And then I started scrolling through my phone. I said, don't don't take a picture because, um, again, obviously through Don, uh, I was able to you know work with a lot of literally Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> that's sort of cool. Um, yeah. Then there were some I got. Again, I I got them without him. But I wouldn't have had that even that opportunity had I not be at the gym. But, yeah, that's sweet. But yeah, Scarlett was my second uh, client ever in New York City, and she's big Disney. Like she's not only just ironic that she you know, Avengers yeah. so works for Disney. She's a major Disney you know fan. Hell and yeah. a, a lot of people are. Just, it's it's like wrestling and Disney as an adult. It's like there's two types of fans. It's like it's ones that admit it and ones that don't. Yeah. And <laughs> so so. Um, so and we I, don't admit it. Yeah. That's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. that, that's uh, like there's two types of professional wrestling fans: ones that admit it and ones that don't admit yeah. it. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that that's uh, um, so a lot of times when when folks would come into the gym, they would like somebody would say, "Oh, you got to talk to Charlie." Well, why? Because like he knows more about your character than you do. Let's go. So um, like obviously, I'm wearing Green Lantern shirt. So. Uh, there's three things in my life that no one ever told me that I, I didn't need to, not to do. 
Number one, don't ever ask uh, Indomik and Sue about the stomp. Don't okay. ever do that. I've, I have a story about that. Uh, not me. Someone, yeah. else, someone else did it. Okay. Uh, number two, don't ever ask Chris Weber about the timeout. Okay. okay? Don't ever do that. Because <laughs> I was in Philly and he yeah. Was, yeah. And then number three, don't ever ask Ryan Reynolds about Green Lantern. <laughs> so, but he's, uh, he's kind of as advertised. He's, he, Ryan is uh, really down, down to earth when you're in the circle. Like when, yeah. uh, I, think, I think as you probably know, professional athletes and celebrities, if you're in their circle, they're not who other people think they are. Not even close. Yeah, right. it's it's a. I mean, it, and it's for good reason. Like, obviously, you want like like you like just seeing some of those people go out in public and just get mobbed and do that stuff. Of course, they have to keep on like a different mask or these boundaries up. But yeah, besides the point. Like again, most humans. Like once you get to know most humans, they're usually pretty decent people. But there's a. Um, I had an orange lantern shirt. So I don't know if people know this, but there's a lantern for every color of the spectrum. I did not know that. Red, orange, yeah, Roy G. Biv. Yeah. So it was an orange lantern. And then some, somebody in the gym goes, uh, hey, is that a Voltron shirt? And I'm like, cause he, it, yeah. it, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to nail this. Yeah, yeah, it's a Voltron shirt. Like, and then Ryan looks up and he starts rolling his eyes. And he goes, he goes, no, really, is it? I said, yeah, yeah. And then Ryan's like, Charlie, I have no idea if you're telling the truth or not right now. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. The the A-list actor can't tell if I'm telling the truth or yeah. not. So who's, the, who's the best actor? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, he, he would just shake his head. Like, But um, uh, what was his name? Matt, not Matt Stevens. Something, because I didn't work with him a lot. I just would talk to him. He played Beast in... in um, Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, so um, whoever the... the, the, the I, know, real, I know who you're talking about. He, yeah. he, he was an English actor. Yeah, I'm not good with names Stevens. either, though. No, not Stephen. Matt, I don't know. I'm not going to help you. <laughs> no, because I didn't, I didn't work with him a lot, so I obviously sound like yeah. a clown here referencing him in a story, but yeah. uh, I didn't work with him a lot. So he had no idea. He took the role, so he was with us to train because to wear that kind of outfit, yeah, you he had it. to be physically prepared, even though you know he was, it was a big suit. And, uh, but he, we would talk all the time about, uh, uh, when he was in the gym, uh, about beauty and the beast, yeah. uh, because he had, and, and like Ryan would explain sometimes that it's different than Matt, Matt Stevens. I think that's his name. No, it's not Matt, but, um, Ryan would be like, yeah, we have to know everything about these superhero or, well, or characters because jerk offs like you will come to Comic-Con and ask us this most dumbest remote question about the orange lanterns yeah and we have to have an answer so it's, i like uh, that yeah it's uh what's it called method acting you gotta get completely immersed into it yeah but, yeah. but when it comes to comics oh yeah the the lineage is like there's like, those that yeah, say yeah. it's real and some yeah. those that say it's, it's not but um uh besides as far as like the round Ryan reynolds deer i always thought that was intriguing um just because i've I, like obviously he looks like in some of his other movies he looks pretty um what was the word we not normal but like he's not he does not not look jack he always looks in shape and that kind of thing but then you get him into some of these superhero roles and like you start seeing like the the muscles pop out yeah. and like the abs and that kind of thing there um, was that one scene in green lantern where he's kind of like he's he appears naked you know but he's got the suit on yeah uh right when he got to oa which is of course the <laughs> the planet uh um so don don trained him for years uh and um even before uh, I'm pretty, maybe I don't know if Green Lantern was the first uh, movie that he worked with him, but uh, yeah. The, but but the other thing too that that I don't know that people know about him he he's legit six five. Like is he that tall? Legit. Like he's he was eye to eye with Indomigan. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, one time in the gym, which was again, think about like how cool that is. Like even if you're any kind of fanboy, and obviously everybody maintains high levels of professionalism in a place like that, but. Uh, it's like I said, like when you guys maybe because when you wear a helmet, so you don't always know who the person is. Oh, it's not even close. I think but, it's, I think it's a hilarious fact of football yeah. that everybody, all, everybody, you don't know who I am. Whenever uh, you hear that, I'm like, well, one, hel helmet syndrome. How yeah. about another one? Um, I'm in the airport and and it was around Super Bowl time, and a little boy comes up to me and says, "Are you Danny Woodhead?" 
And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, no, no, that's I'm racist. Not. Yeah. A- except, except I'm bigger than Danny Woodhead. Yeah. I look like Danny Woodhead <laughs> ate Danny Woodhead. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan, Ryan is legit six, legit six five, uh, and he looks like he works out. Like he, yeah. he, he looks like he's dedicated to fitness. He's not like ridiculous. He doesn't. Uh, could he be? Could he look like a? Maybe he could be like a basketball player. I don't know that he looked like a football player, but uh, tennis but, player. But th- those guys don't have any problem with discipline and getting just like like fast tracking for a role and things like that it's kind of like they're uh, we they're, get into a bunch of stuff because obviously uh um with no names ever it's like it, it's actually impossible you know to do what they do uh without help yeah um you know to to get to that role because if you look at what these folks uh look like uh, and, and this indemnifies ryan to a degree because if you look at ryan all year he kind of looks relatively the same yeah you know, where he's fit and and whatever but when you look at some other actors and they look like a slob uh, like they paparazzi catches them, you know, with no shirt on, and their stomach is hanging over the balcony. Yeah. But then they look like so and so, you know, when they're in the film. Uh, then you know what they, in order to get to that level in three to six months, they went all in. Incredibly disciplined, but not not really possible without you know being enhanced. Yeah. And that's a whole other discussion, which yeah. may not be important. But yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a like. I think that's one of the, the te- like when people have questions like natty or not. Yeah. I mean, what do they look like all year? And what did they look like five years ago? Like, yeah. yeah, that's another. That's a way to. to it's it's more the it's, it's it's a smaller sample size. You need the bigger sample exactly. size to get an idea yeah, of that. But yeah. um, just to kind of start steering a little bit, um, you want to rip through a quick background before we get into like the normal questions. Sure. On the pod? Yeah. yeah. So uh, just because uh, I just sitting here talking before the podcast, I learned some things. So. We should we should start recording whenever. Yeah. Um, so we know each other because by my training as a physical therapist. So um, I, I have uh, I was an ATC in '97, and then I was a PT in '99, and then went back to get my doctorate uh, in physical therapy, uh, DPT, not a PhD. And um, um, I guess people listen to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I am very comfortable suggesting that I had a silver spoon in my mouth as it relates to the job opportunities that I was provided. So I was in minor league basketball as an athletic trainer before I graduated PT school. And the head coach was Rick Barry, one of the greatest ever, yeah. and Clifford Ray, blah, blah, blah. Clifford Ray used to be with the Nets when I graduated PT school. Clifford, I, I kind of thought I want to be in football, want to be in military, go be a pediatric physical therapist, but I kind of like this basketball. Is the trainer the same guy? He's like, yeah, give him a call. I called Thursday. I interviewed on thir- uh, Friday, and I was in the NBA uh, on, on Sunday. Let's go. So I had a lot of opportunities in pro sports, um, which then begets the next one. Like, your resume looks better. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, as, as, as being a, a head strength coach in the NBA, you start to figure that this isn't I – was, I always knew how to lift. Um, and then around that time, uh, I was getting into powerlifting, but I never competed. I was just always strong. Like for me to play the sports that I played, which was hockey and baseball, I needed to be intense. So I liked lifting. Yeah. And then my my levers allowed me to be strong. So you can be seven feet and still be great levers. Like, yeah. Uh, like I have really long legs. It made it's hard to tell at five foot nothing. But I've stood next to dudes that are like six two, and my legs hip, are just as yeah. yeah. So you're able to. It's, it's not just being short. Uh, the, it's levers. So um, I started to see that in the NBA, you can't really get these guys bigger, faster, stronger. It's not, the, it's not like high school strength and conditioning. As a physical therapist, I had other background, and at least in my other, DNA. Other tools. How too. do I help you perform? And uh, at that time, I was one of the first. And then really, if you look at the NBA, there's a lot the, – the, the injection of physical therapy – um, because as soon as I left the NBA and and uh, became more public in in my messages, um, I, I began to talk about which is now like training equals rehab, and I'm, it's not important to promote it, but that's just the name of my brand because to me everything was the same. Like the the whole rules of how you improve somebody from lifting. It's all about what you can recover from. And 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 but but it's also about how do you affect the body. So if I crack your neck. It's not in my mind. It's not different than putting an iron neck on. Mm. You know, the, you're 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 introducing a, a stimulus, and you're looking for a particular response. Yeah. So um, 
so I, I, I then, uh, as we talked about before, I was the head physical therapist from Marine Corps Special Operations Command. Uh, and then after I left there, that's when I met Don and uh, was able to start to be consulting, et cetera, et cetera. So um, people, like, I don't like saying I'm a physical therapist because then that's not really what I do. It, yeah, it's, you're a man of many hats too, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, and, I, and, and uh, I, I manage people's physical you know, well-being, if you will. Yeah. Even if I'm not the one that has the expertise, I know enough about a lot of things to either try something that's a little off the reservation for what someone else might think is a physical therapist, um, but uh, or find someone that like I know you need this solution. I just don't know how to do it. Yeah, and then you just plug it, plug yeah. and play. You keep that's why you keep great people around you. And that's how that's kind of like what I, I think I'm known as. Even though I can be booked for an hour to help your back feel better. The stuff that I'm mainly known for is like, how do you put this all together? Um, I pause and I revert my eyes because I don't really know anybody that does what I do. Like, I, I, and it, that doesn't mean I'm better than anybody. Yeah. It just means I really don't know anybody that does what I do. So uh, that doesn't mean they don't exist. As, far, I, as far as putting like all the pieces together, and yeah. To, that's, because if if I'm if I'm uh, if I have any hubris, it would be that my peripheral vision is really big. Mm. meaning I can see potential solutions, even if I don't know how to do it. Um, because I think a lot of people, like we all have things that we're good at. So we want that to be the solution. I would actually say when I see someone for the first time and we begin to unwrap how to help them, I'm trying to think of ways I can't help them. Like, because if, if there's something that's nutrition related, which I know, you know, quite a bit, but not, I'm not the guy. Yeah. Uh, I would rather kick you to to that person because it's it's the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. Where it doesn't mean that I can't help you with therapy or training. Yeah, where's the most leverage right now for this human? Very rarely are you going to find somebody say that they're going they're, the the way in the way their mind works to evaluate someone is to how to get them out of your care. Yeah. That, that means you're it's not, not not a great business model. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> if you charge enough yeah. on the first <laughs> kick and I don't ever leverage like I don't ever, you know, you know Hey, you're gonna pay me, but I'll get you to this other person. Never, like yeah. that's, maybe I should. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just don't do it, and uh, it doesn't feel right to me. And I feel like I do get paid enough for the time that I. You're just buying my time. Yeah. And then uh, so so yeah, I, I don't love saying I'm a physical therapist because it's not only it's it's not it's not the 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 stereotype of of what it is that I do. Well, I talk I talk about the titles on here too because like again like I'm miles behind uh where you are and what you've done but like i come in as a breathwork coach and th that bleeds into mental skills really quickly and then you can't really talk about breathing unless you talk about breathing while you're sleeping so sleep hygiene mm. bleeds in so uh, uh i had coach darlene santor on here a while back and we kind of came to this conclusion because she's a, a woman of many hats in that realm where she's talking physical emotional spiritual like that whole connection too and so we just say we optimize ourselves and others and like that's our job mm. title and like so now there's you can't put uh you can't put whatever a mask on me or a hat on me when really all i'm trying to do is optimize this human in front of me and when you have the foundational knowledge that you have and then you had this experience and these peripherals on like that's a pretty cool thing where like because like obviously everybody's a specialist now and when I was going through the NFL and those kind of things, I, I went to this guy for acupuncture. I went to a d separate person for this. I went, I had two, like two different masseuses. One was again, just more like relaxing the muscle. The other one was functional. And then IV person, blood work. I had like a specialist for everything, but I think the, some of the coolest humans I've come across in like the performance world and recovery world, they can like kind of weave all these things together where again, I've had chiropractors that can do X amount of dry needling. That's more like tactical, not tactical, but uh, tactical, right, chess, right. a little more chess yeah. related. And I think that's really cool. And then obviously um, for those of you listening, Charlie also um, like still he travels around all the time working on um, pro athletes, et cetera, like uh, the whole spectrum of mm. human, which I think is cool too, because you can learn things from both ends of the spectrum. And again, I work with anybody who will pay me pretty yeah. much. <laughs> but uh, you, you bring up a good point because I think lots of uh, professional athletes uh, are excited to say what you said, meaning yeah. like, oh, I got this guy, I got this guy. So, so, um, doesn't matter who he was, but he's a major, major player. 
and his one of one of his people brought him to me with the expressed intent that I wasn't going to work with him. There was no like there was there probably wasn't like this high level of opportunity to to for him to become a client. But he's like just shake him down, like because he he works with all these different people, and they have no connection to each other. And I was like, oh, I get it. So you just like you think it's like this badge of honor and like this this high level of commitment that you have this guy and you have her and you have him and you have this. But like, let me ask you something. Like, do do do, do any of them know? what the other person did with you. I don't even care about redundancy, yeah. Yeah, which is obviously stupid to begin with. But then you get the bottleneck of the athlete trying to communicate what somebody of your knowledge does to another like professional. And you, you're only, it's like the going through the grapevine, you're going to get fragments of what really happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I'd be condescending towards that approach not because you shouldn't have 19 different people if you need 19 different specialists. Yeah, for sure. It's that, is there a system? It doesn't even have to be a person. It doesn't, you don't have to hire somebody to organize all this. But something like a CEO, and that's kind of like what I do. Like it's, even though I act as the, you know, I'm good at fitness. I'm good at, I'm good at medical from a, from a physical therapy or, or osteopathic standpoint. Osteopathics for musculoskeletal. Uh, and load management. I understand enough about that. Like the other components, somebody else is, is going to be more talented than me. But if you don't have somebody that organizes all of these interventions so that it's not it's not different, you're not seeing 19 people, you're seeing one person that has 19 different arms. And they all share the same brain, they share the same goals, uh, rather than everybody else do, doing good things. It's not, uh, it's, it's not yeah, how it works. Yeah, it's chess, not checkers in that realm where... Again, it's almost like the simplicity of the mindset where like activity doesn't equal achievement, where like a lot of guys have six guys. Mm -hmm. And I I hear it all the time where like this guy has a, again, and I was very similar. I, Serrano was my CEO though. Yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. And that realm, but like, oh, I have this acupuncturist. I have like this trainer. I have this speed trainer. I have this strength trainer. You know, it's just like. Everything comes out of the same biological bank account. Yeah. And to, to. to to or it may not even be a message of too much sometimes it's not enough like you have so much more juice in the tank to get better yeah but if everybody has their own way and it's because um so i mentioned three things and i have this slide that we talk about this it's like in my pitch deck to yeah um and they're buckets in the bottom of the slide is a bunch of buckets and it's meant for metaphorically that you reach into the bucket and you find a, a weapon or a technique. Weapon, yep, a tool, weapon, yeah. weapon is too threatening to some people, but there's tools, a reason. We'll call them tools. There's a reason yeah. I'll say weapon because obviously my background, to some degree, I'm so culturally ingrained in this stuff, type of stuff. Medical, fitness, sleep, psychology, nutrition, and load management. There's six buckets. Mm-hmm. You can pick nine buckets, you can pick three, you can decide what goes in these different buckets. I cho- I choose those because they do represent and highlight what a specialist thinks they're good at, what they're really passionate about. Like, I am this. Okay, well, then you are clearly a medical professional. Yeah. Like, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sleep person. I, like, I'm a PhD, and you belong here. But, but... I would, uh, if, if I'm managing like what we've done in Canada basketball, I didn't say that, but whatever. Every one of, anything that you take out of those buckets has to be able to affect the, the evaluations that everyone uses. So you don't, so if your massage therapist uses a different evaluation model than your fitness guy, nothing. No, this is already, you're already, yeah. one, one plus one equals one point eight. You're already you yeah. so so. We have evaluation models for movement. Can joints get in the right positions? Output. Who are you in your best day? Readiness. Who are you in your best day? There's where your breathing stuff probably has a big role. And sensory systems. Meaning, uh, yeah, yeah, like feedback loops, etc. Yeah, eyes. Like yeah. when when you have to uh, hit the hit the hit the B gap how fast you run and how hard you push into the ground, your eyes have to tell you that because you are seeing something to decide how to do that. So if your eyes aren't delivering yeah. that kind of information, you you might not make the play, uh, even though you're strong enough and fast enough to, to, to do that. Which is, uh, so, yeah, I, I like that a lot just because I've been, uh, you, do you know Dylan uh, Serrano's uh, son-in-law? I don't know. He's either. a Cairo, but he's been schooling me up on some of the vision and then some of the books I'm reading are like, yeah, just, you clearly. don't, 
but you just don't understand how much like 40% of the brain's built around the vision and like just even the ability to manipulate it or like you get into contact sports, how that can affect your vision and impair it moving forward. It just, yeah. it's been blowing my mind that's recently. What no, no one is allowed to say, oh, uh, I don't really do that stuff. What do you, like, how do you not? Like, yeah. it doesn't mean that you intervene upon it. But we're just talking about objective testing. So in my model, you could just be the testing guy. You don't need to do anything about anything. You just test. Yeah. Uh, so and, and direct traffic. But but you could pick any limitation or something that you want to improve. It can already be at a high level. You want to improve it. If it comes out of the correct tests, that means the medical professional can address it. The fitness professional can address it. The sleep professional can uh, expert can address it. So... So you put a heavy amount of weight on the assessment, obviously. Every, I, I don't know how you don't. Yeah. Where, like, how do you know what to do? Now, you can spitball, but if you're, if you're not assessing, you're, you're ultimately guessing. You might be really good at guessing, yeah, but, but I don't know why we would try. Well, why would you guess if you didn't have to? Well, I just think this, that's important information for athletes to hear in general where like, um, a lot of places you'll just hop right into the workouts or the workout group, other – like doctor they'll just they'll feel you out fix where they're where they seem fit whatever even like again like that's why i always like the trainers that assess and train your weaknesses first in that realm because usually that's the more limiting factor very and reasonable so, yeah like not not uh, not incredibly logical in that realm but i just think the the emphasis for athletes on their initial assessment like particularly if they're a creature routine where they've done these th off seasons for multiple years in a row, or they're just following like another big name athlete into their program. Cause it's monkey see monkey do whatever ends up being. I think the assessment part of pro sport, at least like in, in the place uh -huh. that I train is pretty. So many cliches, Brian, so many cliches where like the one that sticks out, like I want to do what so-and-so does. Yeah. Okay. Well, can you move like so-and-so? I don't have any reason to think that their training program can't work for you, except if you can't actually get into the same positions that so-and-so can get into, where, where are we even going with this? Yeah. Um, now, also, too, I always am very open on my perspective. If, I'm prime, if the first entry point for me to, to begin this process with somebody is if they're hurt, like the evaluation is like very culturally accepted like they, versus, no, I feel fine. Okay, but we're going to look at these other things. So now when you look at all those different components, all we're looking for, because people will get down a rabbit hole, you know, can joints get in the right positions to absorb, adapt to stress? That's it. Like, yeah. but, but you have to know for what. Like what is your sport or what are your activities? Because if it's just general population, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Right? Like you can look good naked with just doing one exercise. Yeah. You just you might not be the most efficient way. Uh, output is, okay, like what measures? You know, so just pick... Uh, the, the the simplest tests would be the, the lowest learning curve. Here, lay, uh, kneel down on one knee. Can you get back up? Good. Hold on to these two things. Tell me when you can do eight. Like, there's no one that can't do that. Yeah. What about the little old lady? Well, you just learned perfectly that, that she can't, she's not even strong enough to do one split squat. Yeah. Get a cable. Can you pull this cable? Can you pull it eight times? Yeah, it's easy. What about now? It, it, there's no learning curve to these things. So you can learn upper body push, upper body pull, and split squat. Like the learning curve is, is simple. So it doesn't have to get, you know, like this uh, high level of granular information. Yeah. Then you should look at power if you're an athlete yeah. but it may, or maybe anybody. So how about um, vertical jump? Well, the 80-year-old lady can't do a vertical jump. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure she needs power then. Yeah. Um, uh, lay on your back and throw the med ball. How far does it go? Sit on this chair, throw the med ball. Like everybody knows how to do these things. Yeah. But if they can't do it, you've now learned that maybe somebody is strong enough, but they need to train faster. Yeah. And power is a significant factor for all types of human movement. And it's probably the quality that we lose the fastest as we age. We talk about lean mass, which is another story, but from a physical quality, not, not, a, not a hard measurement of internal uh, structure. Power is an expression of your internal structure. Yeah. You lose power way faster, uh, and, and it's much more meaningful. Like as I talk with my hands, that's inherently a powerful movement because I'm moving very, very lightweight, none, uh, really fast. Yeah. Um, and then readiness, you could look at this in many ways. Like how can, how can like if somebody comes in and just does a workout, how did you know that they didn't just 
run through three red lights uh, and baby was you know, sick at home. So they just got to the workout. Like, and how can you possibly think that whatever you had planned is the right thing for that person that day? And of course, that gets into this whole world of load management. And, and I think a lot of athletes and coaches are scared of readiness because it means you have to slow down. Readiness can mean you go hard, man. We had a medium day today, but you know what? I think you could bring the heat today. Yeah. And I don't know why, but then you learn. And that's yeah, and that's where I think so. Like some coaches, I think are like that's where they're using like the VBT stuff, the velocity based training to like get those gauges at the start. And like a lot of some of the guys I've I've had on and like talked about the VBT stuff because they use it for assessment every day or most days that they actually get to train their guys in season and stuff like that. And it's really actually to hold back like the the blue collar guys that are over training as opposed to like get the the whatever the lax guys like the yeah. more relaxed guys to giddy up. And look, it, uh, I think that's a very real solution. But I think when we explain this stuff, particularly to coaches uh, that are making, because if you take away coaching from a coach, he has nothing. Like yeah. if they're, they're, it's not in their DNA. Like, yeah. Like they would rather lose the game. And coach be allowed to coach, yeah. Then then win and and just sit there like that's like there's no head coach in pro sport that would that would take that like if you put if you put ten vodka and and sodium pentanol as a truth serum down their throat, coach, would you rather sit on the bench over there and win a championship or sleep never, coach your ass off and lose? Like he would coach like there's no way there's no way like that that's that's a problem because. That's just, it's just inconsistent. Like you're telling me you would rather lose. I believe that. That's that, my opinion. Well, that, well, yeah, but like that is a a really cool or not cool, like fun way to look at it as the coach as part of the system. Because, they're equal. That's the thing. Coaches are always considered above. Yeah. So now they're taking this information from a sports science or readiness standpoint. But but I I think when you, when you explain it the first time, you only get one shot at this really. That no coach. We might be able to practice three hours today because our, everybody looks really recovered. And it's always going to be harder in a team sport than yeah, an individual have more, sport. more variables. It can yeah. go either way. It really can. It's, it's not just hold back, yeah. which is very important so that we get the best result. But if, we, if the window is open for performance, I want to take advantage of that because I, I may never get that again. So it's, uh, there's ways to, to look at that, which range from... Like just let's just say low tech, medium tech, and high tech, and nothing should ever be looked upon as red light, yellow light, green light. Like everything should be looked at together, et cetera, et cetera. So um, now getting back to those buckets, if I have the tests that everybody can attack, pick um, loss of power, okay, um, and I did all my evaluation. Can the physical therapist do something about that? Yes, because if they don't have a lot of range of motion. You can't generate power. Yeah. Can the fit? Of course, you can train velo using velocity-based training, not as a me readiness measurement, but as a actual training. Yeah. You lift this weight and keep going until that thing doesn't read 2.0. Yeah. Uh, can can you? Of course, you can improve sleep and improve anything. Yeah, but but you're giving like with the uh, like an accurate assessment, you're giving all the buckets and those that are like basically in charge of each bucket, a universal language. Yes. And that's the, the, because my perspective is about building a team, which in 10 years we were able to do in, in Canada basketball and obviously the development of athletes out of that, that, you know, which is really one city. It's not that everybody is from Toronto, but uh, you see, I say yeah. Toronto. Like, yeah, just like a Malcolm Gladwell, an outlier city in Canada yeah. for basketball. We, yeah. we actually had data and I'm not there anymore. We moved on. Um, I had the sports science guys, the data guys. I said, if I wanted to say that the capital of, of basketball was Toronto, can we do that? Like, and we talked it out because that's, that's a question. Like, yeah. uh, uh, and they were like, well, what, how do we define elite basketball player? NBA? No, that's not fair because if somebody were to say, well, Tristan Thompson would have been in the NBA regardless – is is probably fair. Like that's not. It's hard to like yeah. challenge that because yeah, yeah. if he didn't play basketball, he'd be a tight end. Like like it would. Yeah. It would he would have found. He would have found been it. a shot putter. Like yeah. all these guys. If Andrew Wiggins wasn't in the NBA, he would have been a, a, a Olympic hurdlist just like his mom. Yeah. So um, so so what I said. What about Division One basketball? Because some Division One basketball players never play professional. Yeah. So can we do that? He's like, yeah, let's let's do it. Because then because again, this data is public, so we can scrape the internet, and we basically made a list of where the player was from 
uh, we we included Toronto and we kind of re- did a little research of like what's the, like the six has a range and we decided the range like yeah. so so it's like this isn't real research like Chicago has a circle around it yep. New York City like has a circle around it so we go all the way into New Jersey which obviously is ridiculous like yeah. I'm from New Jersey like people have no idea like how athletically fertile the New Jersey yeah. New Jersey is. So the first year we did it, um, we had Toronto had the second most Division One basketball players uh, at the number of eighty eight. Huh. The number one city represented was Chicago, had ninety two. However, Toronto has three million less people than than Chicago. We win, okay? Yeah. Per what, capita. What, yeah. what also what also we saw just in the first year, which was many years ago, that. Uh, the 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 trend up to that point, Toronto was the only city that had this upward trend every year, Be, and what we were trying to show was that these other cities, yeah, they have way more people, but they they they're they're like Chicago would then be fourth, yeah, and New York would be first or Baltimore, which is a, so we we then became um, the next two years we were the number one represented, and then we dropped to second again, so but we actually have. A program. We are the. Na- it's it's not like America where na- uh, national team sports are like privatized. Yeah. Like forget about football. It's not an international sport. But like in basketball, like you train at wherever. Yeah, you know? yeah. You you play on your club team and you just there, like there's travel no, and play. Yeah. yeah. USA basketball doesn't have like a place for elite basketball players to go and have a system of training. The, the universal language in the system is what we described, and this is what we applied to to uh, to these models. Now, we didn't win as many games because that model did not address enough getting players to show up. Huh. Because I don't think there's anyone on earth that would say that uh, if, if, if Canada consistently, if we had our best guys show up, you know, for the highest levels of competition, meaning guys had a chance to play with each other. Yeah. Wow, that sounded really weird. Uh, <laughs> then we, we were clearly the second best country in the world. Hell yeah. Um, but guys, other countries that are also really, really good, Argentina, Serbia, France, Spain, these dudes have been playing together since they're like 12. Yeah. And uh, But from a talent level on the video game, hands down, we would, we're, we would be second. Uh, and I think most people would recognize that, but we're not good enough at getting the players to commit to play. And and but from a physical level, the the generation the bodies of, are, the bodies are there. We have the most the most players in the NBA not from America, the most first round draft picks ever not from America, the most number 1 overall not from America. No one's even close. So, it, well, Canada's North American. Okay, well, then somebody's got to do like but there's other countries that are much more populated than Canada, even though it's a huge country. Yeah. Very few people live north of a of a certain line. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I uh, I I, yeah. I played up in the CFL for so you know. uh, yeah two and a half years. Some of my favorite humans are up there, yeah. but it's just um, yeah, that's a that's something I wouldn't have guessed. Well, when when we talk about the value of these buckets, and I only gave you two sides of the square. Okay. Like, oh, well, why should you listen to me? Well, because we I just gave you the data. At least that, and I control the data, so it's not uh, it's not like this objective thing. I'm telling you that the like this whole whether you call it universal language, and I call it all of these weapons that are all triangulated on the on the same bad guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we won't we won't pick something unless every staff member has an opportunity to positively impact it, and they and they're obliged to use the same evaluation model. So, like, why would a physical therapist use a different evaluation model than an orthopedic surgeon? Or why would a physical therapist, why would a fitness professional use a different evaluation model than a nutrition person? The nutrition is controlling the energetics that drive the fitness. Why would they care about different things? Is it, is it tough to get everybody on the same page as far as an evaluation assessment? Not if you have the right people. Okay. And that's, that's the most important thing. So, um, and, and it, because it brought me to this level of direction and also learning what I wasn't good enough yet when I was at MARSOC because I was just given these people and it was, a, it was a mess. Like yeah. these are, you know, this one worked at the YMCA. This one was the wife of a Marine. So that makes her going to be good. Well, yeah, this is the most ridiculous stuff ever. I wasn't good enough yet. I wasn't, I wasn't mature or, enough or surrounded with the right people yet either. Well, what I should, that, uh, that's obvious, but, yeah. but as a leader and a manager, I wasn't good enough yet. And, and it took, just took a long time. But in Canada, the, I was like the only one that was never an intern. 
So as the program, because we all start, like I started at a point where can't, the, the organization knew all these kids were coming. So they started to invest more and they're like, we need, you know, they, they, I was very flattered. They thought I would be the guy that could build this physical piece. Yeah. No differently than how Marsock thought I would be the guy, but they didn't have the foresight that they just thought it was just, you just need an extra set of hands to, to, to yell at people to, to work out. <laughs> but, um, so, so then as years went on and as our program grew and we had more financial resources, the people we hired was the interns and they didn't know any other way. So it, it wasn't hard at all versus, you know, as well as I do, if I went in and I was given an opportunity on an NFL team next year, yeah. but I couldn't, I couldn't sack anybody, dude, I, that, that's the, you, I have to be patient. Yeah. But I, at some point I got to be able to sack them because if you, if I can't accomplish what I think I, that you're hiring more and paying me all this money to do, like the head coach got to bring in all his own people. Now, I don't think that's the only way. I do think it's the best way. Yeah, but you also, like, it's, like, obviously, like, you one, you want everybody rowing the boat in the same direction, but you also want those buckets to, like, be full of weapons, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if you don't have these people are empty buckets or they're hanging their hat on what they learned 20 years ago in PT school, then it's a whole different. There's a, uh, there's a coach that used to be in the NFL, and he used to coach not far from where we are right now. Yeah. Um, they had to make a change uh, with, the uh, high level position. And, um, what I had said was, uh, I, I'm going to keep everybody. Uh, and I obviously didn't get the opportunity, yeah. but I said, I'm gonna keep everybody. Cause it was, it was so late. Like this was not the normal time because obviously they need to make a, they yeah. needed to make a very quick change. And, uh, I said, um, give me a year, but then I have to be able to make changes. Yeah. Number one, uh, it allows me to have a chance to be a leader. Because I know I have time. I didn't give myself time in these other, in, in Marsoc. Number two, uh, it gives everybody a chance to get on the bus. But yeah. I got to know that it's, I got to know that it's my bus. Yeah, and they got to take it. Yeah. Number, number three, there is some level of fiscal responsibility. You know, we're deep six in players for 25 million, but you're not going to whack somebody for 100 grand. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then fourth is good karma. I wouldn't want somebody, I wouldn't want to think that I just moved to this city and now I lost my job. So, so there's ways to, to massage this, but that was an interesting situation where in no way would I believe that randomly you're going to bring in a director of people that already got hired under a different infrastructure, how that could possibly get back to what we were talking about for the last 25 minutes, yeah. like where everybody's on the same page. It doesn't mean that they can't become on the same page, but that's nothing more than luck. Yeah. Why would you... Like, try your love. Oh, you're the best leader in the world. You can get anybody to do anything. No, you can only do that with the right people. Like, at Marsoc, uh, Gandhi, Jesus, and God couldn't have brought that group together. Yeah. Uh, like, and I'll stand on my head on that. We're going to print with that. Yeah. So, um, but if you give yourself time and, and you know that you're safe in, your, in the amount of time that you have to, 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 the, to execute this deliverable, then maybe you want maybe you're missing a couple studs yeah. just because you need to wipe everybody out. But um, I think that's that's crucial. So so to do my stuff, the stuff that I'm talking about, you can't just randomly put people together. That's not possible. Yeah. No differently than as a player, if they change the strategy of how they play, uh, how can you possibly expect these guys to all be the same? Yeah. talent level like you can't like uh what no one ever does it anymore but like you know like the run and shoot like the the five receivers yeah those linemen are not 330 pounds like yeah. but then you're gonna bring in a new coach who wants to run like a power eye with the wrong bodies with the wrong with tools how, yeah. yeah so it, it doesn't mean that they weren't the right people at that time yeah it's but when, when you when you trust a leader you have to really trust them. And I don't think that happens a lot on the performance side. So it seems almost strange what I'm talking about. Well, oh, players love them. I'm like, okay, well, you, you, you can be a really good person and suck at your job. Like, that, that's, not, that's not impossible. Like, you're allowed to, like, multiple things are allowed to be true. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, in my profession, because it's so people, like, you're, you're constantly in the space. Like, if I were to, to name a coach that you really liked, and I, and like I'd be like, dude, he's he's garbage, and I well well I, I that's my guy. I'm like, yeah. well, I never met him. He might be really cool, but from what I know, 
he he's he's his the merit of his work. Well, I feel great. I'm like, dude, you're a professional athlete. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. how is that even possible that you're gonna use that as a metric? Yeah. Um. So so I think it, it sucks when we can't objectively give an opinion when asked. Now you should. Nobody needs to be going on the internet and saying so and so is garbage. I wouldn't want somebody to do that yeah. about me. Um, and, and that's not what I'm, you know, yeah, I, you're talking about internal conversations or to, if someone to, asked to maximize. Yeah. Group. Like yeah. if you ask me oh, when we turn the camera off, like, Hey, what do I think of so-and-so? I'm like, I would probably say first, Brian, I never met this person. I have no idea. So what I'm saying is only what I know from yeah. these resources, which is never going to be a complete message, but I'm still allowed to say from what I have seen. None of this is consistent with elite levels of, of, of science and performance. Yeah. And that doesn't mean he's a bad person. Nobody said he beats his kids and, and, yeah. and robs banks. But, but, but people, people, people get offended that heavily. Yes, and, yes. Per, and because I, I've talked about this on and off on the podcast a bunch where just internally, like even because like you're also like when you get into like a pro sports team, like everybody's at the, like the, the elite level of their profession, whether it is a PT or a strength staff and that kind of thing where – a lot of times, like it's when things go south, somebody gets hurt, anything like that, there becomes this finger pointing game. And you see some of these, again, these, I don't want to say people identify with the information that they hold true, but like it's also like they're that level of uh, reactive to new information or to somebody attacking their stance. Or, yeah, I, I would not agree that uh, pro sport is reserved for the best people in my profession. Yeah. It's reserved for the best players. Largely the best coaches, but not all. There's a high school coach somewhere who's a genius. Oh, yeah. For athletic trainers, physical therapists, strength coaches, no. Like, that's, that's not it. Like, the, it's more of who's a great person to be around. If we're going to say that's the standard of how to be great in that profession, then, the, then let's just say that. Like, but let's also say that, like, I don't care if this person is a good strength and conditioning coach. I don't care if he or she sucks. As long as the players enjoy being around the person, then then that's all we're going to use. Then that then then it's then it's for the best. Yeah. But this is not the place. You know, it, it's um, no development. I think is massively overlooked internally. Well, whether whether they're already developed or the develop because there's nobody nobody knows what they know. Even if they suck, the the head coach and the GM of the team or pre- whatever. The, the primary, like, in, in, uh, as you know, uh, maybe people don't know, it's a very co- uh, football, NFL culture, like, you answer to. Like, who do you report to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, having been at that level, like, I understand. Like, okay. So the person that report that you report to, they don't have enough peripheral vision or expertise to actually judge the quality of your work. They can only judge how comfortable they are in communicating. So if you're the mm. head athletic trainer... And your job is to bring coach the the uh, the injured list every day. Based off all the other PTs, assessments, and standards. Head yeah. coach has no... So if I go up to head coach, I'd be like, yo, your guy is trash. That's probably shocking to him. Or, you know, oh, like, guaranteed. And it can't be. That can't be shocking. Because number one, if you really are the head coach, be like, dude, I can't talk to you right now, but I need your number because I need to know what you're talking about here. Yeah. Because I was, I'll have these conversations... With other clients, ones that, you know, because I don't only work with athletes like a lot of people think. So, like, uh, CEO of Company X that you know, like, you, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, Bob, if, if, if you're the, if you're the, if you're in the boardroom and, and somebody says four weeks and then someone else says four days, you're like, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what's going on here? Meaning that, that's, you know, our consultant says four weeks, but our internal guy says, because the head coach would probably reject it, yeah. yeah he, rather he, than actually understand, he'd take the option that help, lets him coach. Yeah, that but, that but, asset, or just yeah. not even have to deal with it yeah. because he whatever standard that he or she has is being met. Yeah, uh, and it's really just how comfortable they are in communicating. And it's what standard are we holding them to? They don't know. Like, how do you know? Because if I take a, if I take a bunch of players that look yoked out and and they're making plays, et cetera, et cetera. Ah, it's football. Because football is a little different. Yeah. But in basketball, it's the same. And there ain't nobody running into anybody like that in, yeah. in, in basketball. But like, oh, it's just part of the game. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, no. Like, it's not part of the game. Like, it's, it's – you, you might accept it as part of the game. And, and look, every sport at the high level has different cultural challenges. Yeah. I, I've said that if you, if you take all the good things out of all the sports – so if you take the, 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 
the ridiculous, I was about to say a different word that's not, not sensitive. Yeah. The ridiculous uh, toughness of hockey players and, and the, um, the commitment to, to, to training hard as a football player and the money and resources from basketball. And the, the acceptance and utility of data of baseball, that's the team I want to be on. Mm. Like, because, and it's not to say that football players aren't tough. Clearly, basketball players are not tough. That, that I'm allowed yeah, to say yeah. that. I was there for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. you know, like they're, not, they're not tough. Um, and and uh, baseball is behind on many, many different things other, except data because they have so many data points. Yeah. And it's just there, there's, there's managers that make decisions simply based on data because there's so many ends. There's so many data points. But if you, so it doesn't mean that the, the so-and-so is not tough. It doesn't mean that this person doesn't train hard. But if you took the cultural pieces of those four, where again, um, obviously football and basketball is where I've had the most show up to work, you know, with, and, yeah. fob, and fob in. Yeah. Um, but I've worked in, uh, in, in, with these types of players and consulting with teams that if I got all four, oh my God, like, like how incredible, you know what it would probably be? It would then look like some of these foreign teams, um, you know, or like all blacks, you know, yeah. New Zealand, uh, et cetera, et cetera, where, you know, some of these incredible values yeah. exude. You cannot do any of this without the right people. No, yeah. That's, that's, that's and that's, that's I, I think that's a dynamite point. And like, so I, I really like rugby. I like their culture. Like I, like I've been mildly exposed to it with Tiger Rugby here. One of my other buddies who's been on the podcast a bunch, Nate Ebner's opened my eyes to just like the kind of like the tall poppy syndrome. I played a little bit of rugby when I was traveling through New Zealand too, but like they, they you can see just stepping into like a firefighters league of rugby that it's just, uh, the standards are di like the standards are just like set the respect levels there and they have like this granted like this is like again like a amateur league in that realm and so i'm not talking sports performance or anything like that but that culture of like humbleness like i can see that like bleeding into the sports science the pt and that kind of thing and mm -hmm. like that like that's the culture of minds that you're talking about because you're also talking about the guys that know how to train their face off guys that deal with contact and then um, to see to yeah. see guys that are 250, 260, 270 and have the fitness of a 400 meter runner, that yeah. doesn't happen yes. you know, by, yes. by yes. chance. Sevens rugby is Oh, it's unbelievable. Absurd. Like you would just watch clips on YouTube of what these monsters look like. But the problem is like when they when we from my, again from my profession, when when teams pilfer those the, the people that run the models there. Yeah. But because they're like tripling and quadrupling their salary and they get to come to America and, and, and wave the flag, they, they, they come and they fall flat because they're not resourced enough. But for them, the opportunity is, is, is worth it. Yeah, unmissable. But yeah. You, can't, you can't accomplish those types. of. You can read legacy from you know, every week, cover to cover. Yeah. You cannot bring that unless you are resourced to, yeah. to do it and so you're like because now you're even talking on top of that, you're talking about like the coaches that understand that whole Everything. yeah which is really cool um just to get some action out of this for the for the boys um and girls <laughs> um but the like an athlete that's stepping in to work with somebody like you or they're stepping into another gym or they're stepping into a new system um what is like like as far as like the assessment, this language you're talking about, what are some things guys should look for? Like when you're walking into, again, what to say just a new team or a new trainer, like what are things that that person should be doing that, oh, I know they know what the fuck they're uh, talking about. Undercover boss. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I, <laughs> if, I go into, if I go into your gym and I'm undercover boss, I'm going to, um, so I would say like, hey, I would like to uh, lose uh, just general population. Yeah. I'd like to lose 20 pounds. And I'd like to do that in six months. Uh, that's it. That's all I want. Yeah. Like, that's obviously, you know, not, not, not insurmountable. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm then going to, then, then the, the person should then ask, okay, how many times a week are you willing to commit to your training? Four days. I will be here four days and I will stay here as long as you want me to stay. Oh, okay. Um, um, are you willing to do X, Y, and Z with your food? Well, what do you mean? Like, so, so it can't be one without the other for yeah. my goals. Yeah. Now, uh, but it could be any goal. So now I would like to become an NFL player. 
and I will train. I will do exactly what you say. Like, okay, well, you have to ask me what is my, what are my co- levels of commitment? Yeah. Um, and then uh, that person, uh, uh, that that coach, they should know what the training program looks like right then and there. That doesn't mean that's the training program they're going to run with. But like, I know what are, I have an opinion as a coach, or what are the best exercises and structure to four days a week to help so and so lose 20 pounds in six months. I I know exactly what I want to do. Then I'm going to run those models of of evaluation that I said was on the right-hand side of my slide. I'm going to use some type of evaluation to determine what your joints can do because I know what my best exercises can do. And one of them happens to be uh, hang clean. I'm just missing so. But uh, so I'm very interested on how well your elbow and wrist moves. Because you didn't tell me that you had wrist fr- surgery three years ago. Yeah. So you can't clean. Or you can't clean the way I want you to. So maybe we would do kettlebell clean. Or maybe we would do a snatch. Or maybe we would just do kettlebell swing. So I can still be explosive. But you see, I have to do some kind of evaluation to learn if your joints can get into the right positions to absorb adaptive stress. Well, how do you know what? Because I already know the exercises. Yeah. I think one problem that people that get down these movement evaluation rabbit holes is they don't have a training plan in mind. They let the evaluation dictate the training. No, your the goals should dictate the training, and then you move backwards only if you need to. Only if there's impediments to exactly. It. Like we're not doing rehab, and I'm the physical therapist. I'm the one that you know, train equals rehab is like, you know, that I've had people and it's so flattering. Uh, and I apologize for any hubris on this one, but I've had coaches that are way older than me, like that have been there and done that. They're like, Charlie, you, you helped change the profession on how you brought concepts. I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you, man. That's uh, Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. It's special. It's nice to, nice to be pat on the back. But what I'm saying is that I'm already saying people don't train hard enough. Like I don't want these rehab workouts. They do nothing. Like you don't even need rehab. Like you're, you're, I I only care about the joints. I'm not looking for special exercises for movement. So now, if your hamstrings, your posterior chain is so stiff that the most you can do in your RDL is get the bar to your knee, I have a choice. Do I want to do RDL to your knee with like 800 pounds? Or should I do special exercises to improve mobility of the posterior chain? That has to come out of the evaluation. And what can I do instead? And that's a a good coach. So Yeah, so just because... Again, this is, I, I, I don't know, this is going to trigger you or not, but um, obviously like a lot of what I've seen become the standard is obviously the FMS and the Nord board and those kind of things is like guys walk in and they get that done on professional teams. Yeah. A- FMS would be the, the uh, for someone who's not in pain, would be the, uh, the, the 100% best and fastest way to determine every joint in the body can they get into the right positions to absorb adaptive stress for general training? It is not useful to uh, for, for specific components of the sport. Yeah. It, it's not going to tell me about the shoulder motion for a quarterback. Okay. But if it's general training, there is no joint position that can be evaluated for without it, that, that the, the, there's no joint position that would be missed from the FMS. Zero. Okay, cool. It, it's, there's nothing. Now, if you, if somebody were to, um, make claims that the FMS doesn't do this, this, or this, it, it, it's probably, they're probably correct. And, and they, but it, but it's not, it's not associated. It's sport specific. It, it, it's, it, or whatever it is. It's like, well, the FMS doesn't predict injury. Well, no one said it did. Like that's, it's, yeah. don't, don't ever say that again. Yeah. Because, because uh, the FMS also doesn't cure cancer. <laughs> uh, and the, the, the FMS doesn't evaluate for your vitamin D levels. Yeah. That, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Can joints get in the right positions to absorb and adapt to stress? So we just talked about the clean. So now if you have, stiffness in the top of your joint when you're doing the extension. Well, I thought the extension was for your back. What about extension for your wrist? It's, it's called the extension clearing test. Now, th- I have, th- th- yeah, we, we could go have, on. You have a litany of tests. Well, yeah. because I was there before FMS mattered to anybody. Yeah. Like I, I was doing, I, was, I, I think I first got exposed to it in 2004, what I was saying in the NBA, because I had, I had, um, I had some experience with some other models and they're like, oh my God, if you think that's cool, you should look up what this hillbilly from Virginia is talking about. 
and and I learned the FMS. There was no certifications, so you had to learn it on your own. And at that point, you know, usually, and it's still the case, the best way to learn something is just talk. Like, yeah, not like there's no. I'm done with collecting certifications and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, well, talk t- talk through people that are fluent in that language. Yeah. But as a head strength coach in the NBA, I was able to get Lee Burton to take yeah, my yeah, call. Yeah. And there was no certification, so my perspective of the FMS is much much different. And I don't care. Like I'm, I'm, I don't represent their company. They were, they were both invited to my wedding. Yeah. Uh, I've been close with them. I will. Yeah. You, know, you uh, if I were to be triggered, it would be because oh that dude's this. Like you never met him. Like if you don't like the model, shut up. This is how this man puts money on his table. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, that's and, a good point. Like, and, and you're wrong. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> you're you're totally wrong. Like I don't. Uh, in in if you it, there's you're telling me I. I could, in 10 minutes, maximum 12 minutes, meaning I just learned the FMS yesterday and I'm reading out of the manual, and you have a lot of joint restrictions, so I have to do it the longest way possible, maximum 12 minutes, and now I know, because I already know what my training program would be. Yeah. So the FMS would be the best option. If you have another option, I don't, li- I don't dislike you. Yeah. Uh, if, I'm an, if I'm a messenger and someone is asking my opinion, that is the 100%, the absolute best way. But you have to know how to do it correctly. And, and my interest in communicating how to do it is so that you can be awesome. I don't care if I promulgate the company. Yeah. Because those are two different things. Yeah, and- but, uh, but also like – you 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 uh, specified at the beginning of this whole part of the FMS conversation too that as long as that coach or whatever trainer has the like their programming in mind to find these flaws makes a lot more sense that test makes a lot of sense to yes. go through and be efficient in yes. the process of, process of assessment as well um so now you also mentioned the nord board so i would put the nord board under output okay i would not put it under movement because I'm simply measuring the yeah. relative this this made up number yeah uh, and it's of incredibly valid and very very useful um, of the ha- of hamstrings in this particular exercise. Would would you say that's more important from an asymmetry standpoint or like a true output? I think both. I think the data would suggest both. Okay. But uh, for instance, if I saw an asymmetry, how do I know that that your hips and knees are symmetrical? And then you're just expressing what your joints allow you to express. So the joints take precedent yeah. to the muscle performance. Yeah. And that's where, like, I, I heard, that, and I've said this on the podcast a few times, where, like, if you train or evaluate movement, you won't miss muscles. If you train muscles by themselves. I think that's fair. Yeah. You will, like, uh, you'll for sure miss yeah. movements. So um, Nordboard, now I gave you three three of the lowest hanging yeah because the, the the lowest learning curve yeah so, which is good for stupid people like me but, so yeah well it's it's yeah. it's uh so the, the the model that i'm talking about every movement output readiness and sensory systems has three layers okay it has human athletic sports specific okay so nordboard would not be human human would be a cable one arm pull cable one arm push and split squat okay and then Set your standards. You know, I cho- I said eight before uh, because there's there's data to to suggest, particularly on the PGA Tour. You know okay. what is because again, if you want to hit the ball farther, do I need to get faster or do, do I need to get stronger? You yeah. well know these golfers like if you turn on the air conditioning, they blow away. Yeah, they need to get stronger. <laughs> yeah, guaranteed. Uh, so then then if we look at the athletic level, you have to know how to do the movement. I, I do not believe that here. Just just if you're just looking at a Nord board. And I don't show you how to do it. You don't really know what to do. Yeah. Um, but the uh, and I don't even care if you don't have good joint uh, co- competency, because I may use some knee mobilization, maybe which probably wouldn't be the case. And then all of a sudden your Nord board goes up. Yeah. See, that's important. Like you have to do. You, like nothing happens in isolation. Yeah. Yeah. So so we would put all of your gen. So we believe in two twenty five for max reps. That's kind of foolish, but. Uh, but that would fit into the athletic because yeah. like there's a lot of sports that you know whatever and then sports specific there might be something that probably is only useful for that sport yeah like the difference between hockey and football is pretty big there yeah, yeah it's so uh um to 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 a degree but yeah, if yeah. We, but if we looked at the athletic piece very, they'll probably be yeah, very, very very similar, similar yeah. yeah yeah um but but you have to know how to do it yeah so now if there's a high learning curve I may not get into that stuff very, very quickly. 
Yeah, but you might have a guy for that. You yeah. Know? yeah. Well, it's uh, you have to learn it. Like yeah. you can't. Like I don't believe anybody knows how to do a hand clean the first time they pick up a bar. Yeah, guaranteed. But but I think the evidence that supports hand clean is very very high. There's also evidence to say that a hang pull, where you don't go into the second pull and catch, actually is pretty similar in the reproduction of vertical jump. Yeah. So if you're, but now I'm just saying, saying, don't ask somebody to clean if their elbows can't bend enough to do it body weight. Which is logical. So, but but that's not what people do. No, they, I know. Because yeah. they wouldn't even do the evaluation. No, I completely agree. And so, I've and I've been in programs where they just throw us and throw us to the wolves. You're and like say, this. Hey, you're holding the bar. Oh, and my 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 wrists have always been terrible in that capacity. So, where it's just. But we can take it a step further uh, on. Um, Whatever model you would use to measure your readiness, because that could change on a on a daily basis depending yeah, on what you do. Yeah, that intrigues me. Let's go down that. So road. now, uh, your uh, Nordboard. And what, one of the things that's very interesting to me is I always my numbers were always lower than somebody else. But I don't know if we can tell on camera. But I'm like a foot shorter than you, so yeah. I don't have as much time to generate a number. Yeah. So I was always very interested in what, what really affects the Nordboard. Mm. Because I would ask people like, well, do you find that there's a height? Now that's not readiness, but it begs the question because output is just a snapshot yeah, it's not because like I because I've I've been intrigued at this too because I like I would get competitive with the Nordboard because we were doing that not every week but that, we'd kind of had like that was a one of our metrics and like some of these like big D linemen would be always put out stupid numbers and like oh I'm not strong enough there but when really it's potentially yeah. like a lever well whatever. that's where I think a lot of the data comes out of sports that are the the athletes are far more homogeneous than American football. So there's no way that a, a lineman should be the same as a linebacker yeah. for everything. That's yeah. foolish. Um, now, so now we take it a step further for readiness, and we can make it very, very silly. If I punched you in the face, I don't think your Nord board is going to be as high as if you're fresh and ready to go. Like, yeah, for sure. So now if your nervous system of some way is, is in a state of, of recovery and, it's, and you're really underwater – Maybe your Nord board is below what we would think this person should be doing because your, your, your battery is like so low that your, your iPhone automatically went to battery saver. Yeah. Which is the case. You know this. Like you, well, I, I just like, I like that because I use the battery analogy a lot just with sleep. And then, but also it just like it, it, you're talking about it influencing the assessment in general where like, why is that not the first stage of assessment? Where like like if you're you're not even evaluating this human with a full battery, you're 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 evaluating a sixty percent of what they. That's can. where movement output readiness and sensory systems, and again we we can leave sensory systems out because at some point now, so remember everything has three levels. Yeah. So if your eyes um, are are limited, your balance like you get three you have three tools to balance. Yeah. You have stable surface. You have your eyes and you have your cerebellum in your brain. Yep. So if your eyes are not even functioning at that level, you're going to think you have vertigo all the time. Yeah. And you might. So now I have an opportunity to get you to the right person. And I don't even care about a lot of these other things. But I do think that if you were to run all of this on day one, then you would have a great idea not only to help people that needed help, you would actually start to find out what makes the best players tick. Mm. Um. So, so I, I don't, you know, this one I'll say public, um, around 2011 or 2012 using, uh, an eye test that wasn't E, you know, it wasn't the Snell chart. Yeah. Cause I also know professional athletes that I won't name that are legally blind in one eye, but they still drive. Like, how do you do this? Well, I just memorize the Snell chart. Like, yeah. oh my God, like you think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, so when they look at vision, you can't fake it. Yeah. So the thing just gets smaller and you have a little iPad. So it may not be as valid as a Snell chart, but it kicks you to a more formal test. Yeah. Uncorrected, Aaron Rodgers was 20 over 8. Does that surprise anybody? <laughs> like, not, then, yeah. you know, um, and, and I think 20 over 12 would be the vision for a professional athlete uncorrected. Not 20 over 20. Okay. So now, dude, how great would it be if you could see better? Yeah. Now, what if you saw, what if you were 20 over 30, but you're not corrected because you don't want to wear glasses or you can't do contacts? Yeah. So now the blurriness that you have to integrate in your brain, that is a load. That's a stressor on your body, which might at some point annoy you to the point that you can't 
you know, yeah. put enough force into the ground to make a play. Yeah. So you see, eyes at a human level does have a role, but I understand, like, I also uh, think that we should always look at things at the top level, like fantasy land, yeah. and then scale back. That way you don't miss anything. Yeah, but uh, like, just, just with the system you just presented, like, for me, like, I always think, like, physiology and those sensor and the sensory inputs or your sensory capability, I, I think that's first. Like, mm. is, is that what... Would you... I have no argument. I, I would... Uh, well, maybe I do have an argument. I would say the reason we're looking at sensory systems is to evaluate your performance. Yeah. Okay. In order for you to perform, including playing chess uh, or, or including debate, like yeah. some of these highly cerebral, less physical tasks, I still have to know about my TMJ joint. Yeah. Like I still... You, if, you're, if you're moving... Nothing matters if your joints can't get into the right position because great athletes will figure out, great performers, motivated human beings will figure out a way. But if your joint can't do it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, even, even the elite, like obviously there are so many elite athletes are elite co compensatory yeah. users as so, well. But, 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 if, but again, if your elbow only bends to 90, you, know, you won't be able to do a clean. I don't care about what. A, yeah. So I would say movement you know, is the most important thing, then you could start to toggle some of the other priorities. So, you, yeah, so I guess I, I see that side too, where it's also like that, like that there, but they, like obviously movement should obviously be a priority just because that's what we do. We, we yeah, move, we we're move. testing so, to see how you move. And then like now you start talking separators, you want to get these sensory things completely dialed. I think what you might be saying, Brian, is that the sensory system under most situations might hold the highest priority. I think that is a far more... Okay. Defensible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. meaning I got nothing because because if, if if people don't even measure it, which obviously they don't. Yeah, a lot, uh, a lot of people don't. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just hitting buttons on a on a that no, like everything is is precise and 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 geared and and specific to the individual. Um, then you might find that sensory system is is big because, you know, if if somebody's trying to mobilize your ankle, and so you can you know get into good position to sprint, it's very possible that that is a vestibular issue yeah. and you like move your eyes three times to the right and, 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 and wink yeah. all of a sudden your ankle can, can, can move. That means it would never, it was never a joint issue in the first place. And that's where like my learning as of late, like just blows my mind where that can be a vestibular issue. Yeah. And, yeah. but even with like the prevention of concussions and things like that, it's just been, yeah. Another, now. another level of amplification. Yeah. So like from the output standpoint, work capacity, would be the most important thing there. Yeah. Meaning, but I have to know work capacity for what? Like fitness for what? Yeah. And you know, that's where it gets sports specific really quick. Have to. Yeah. Like to say so-and-so is the fittest person on planet. Not like, that. obviously that's marketing, but you know, like, um, yeah, if you want to be the best at exercising. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and that's really good. Like yeah, yeah, these, yeah. there's probably a lot of good health benefits that potentially yeah, can come from our that. side effects. But yeah. to say that, uh, um, an NFL lineman, uh, offensive lineman who's maybe carrying 30% body fat, is 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 less fit than a Tour de France, you know, bi bicycle. I understand the argument. Let me see what that. Let me see what that uh, uh, bicyclist does against me on the edge. Like, yeah. Forget about a real professional. Fitness is only specific to the activity. Are you fit for X? Like um, now, health is a different story. Health and fitness are not the same. Yeah, that's why we have a human level of evaluation and then a general you know athletic level and then a sport specific now we can we're, not, we're comparing apples and apples yeah so. and like that makes sense to me too and so we we uh we kind of went down the rabbit hole we were an hour and 15 minutes in so i don't want to uh, i don't wanna keep chewing up your time rock but it out baby rock it out yeah no that's awesome um because somebody's hearing this and uh, and i always take that assumption when we do podcasts or yeah. whatever somebody's like somebody's going to be moved somebody's going to think this is cool yeah, it, well, <laughs> and and then other people might think i'm some kind of whatever <laughs> no well i just think it's um i'm hoping the people that listen uh, that do listen um evaluate their own systems uh, yeah. because like me as an athlete like the assessment was didn't even come into my radar and like that it's something now looking back where i have some wisdom to it now where like I did the monkey see monkey do thing. I went and traded with Adrian Peterson and his crew and I just, they knew their work capacity, stupid high. And I go, okay, like, and like, that's where I've had a bunch of cool people on here that I've learned from now where like, I was only training the workhorse side of my, my athlete when there's so there's, again, there's five more buckets that I was neglecting 
because I thought this was the only way to separate myself or be, or be primed to be again, resilient enough to beat out everybody else. And like, that's more kind of what we were talking about before the podcast where I'm just training mental toughness and that's my armor as opposed to training like the real sports specific yeah. athlete it, that I am. Everything has value when it's put into perspective, yeah. you know, and, and the only way to know where the gaps are and where the lowest hanging fruit is, is if you do this type of evaluation and, 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 um, I can only say, because it's kind of hard to really illustrate this in how we're communicating and sharing this. Yeah. Dude, we're, we're not getting down the rabbit hole. And like you can see on camera, like it's not like I don't train. It's not like I had it years ago. Um, there's some researchers that um, they, uh, they said, all you need to do for core is like squats or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I've like, that. that's the dumbest thing in ever because first of all, you're just defining core in one way. They, yeah. un unfortunately, core is such a polarizing and weird word because it can mean a million things. And I was like, no. Like, so they said, without knowing who it was, uh, well, tell that physical therapist to get his pocket protector out of his uh, jacket. And then I said, send him the YouTube where uh, I squatted 820 pounds and tell me, tell me what you think about that yeah, physical that, therapist. Yeah, then get, so it's, get him a pocket we're, protector. Yeah. We're not going down a rabbit hole. We're not getting paralyzed with information. We're not using... Oh. We're talking about a proper yeah. system that it, is a logical system. And we're not using catapult and first beat and omega wave every single day and not doing anything and, about and it. Per, and like anal analysis by paralysis. It's just exactly. like, and, but like, that's where like, that's why that's the system I was hoping to get out of this, this podcast too, where it's just like, you need to look at your system as a whole. You need to look at your yourself as a whole and you need to look at the team around you as a whole and make sure they're speaking the right language mm -hmm. because that in essence like that can again you're you're solving redundancies, you're yeah. solving the activity of achievement. You're, you're like there's no more like trophy for having six guys. There's uh, there's a trophy for having the right system and communication That's across right. that system. Well, I think I think Brian there's there's going to be people that are listening that actually agree with all of yeah. this and then they're going to come up with reasons why they can't do it yeah and and they're not wrong yeah get there yeah. or don't and and be like but but walk around with a big b on your chest like because you're a b player like you're yeah. a b plus mm. guy like that's okay you're not a bad person but to suggest that anything that we're talking about in these very very global levels because i also say if you don't want to use the fms do something else can you beat 12 minutes i don't think you can yeah. but that's my yeah go, go, run with me then let's see what we got yeah. then you know like i love that like with all the antagonists of fms like I'm not dumb. Like, okay, you can say whatever. Like, I'm not the smartest dude in the world, but I'm not dumb. Like, yeah. But, but I think um, the, the, like, because a lot of people are going to say, well, we don't do that. Like, well, we don't do that stuff. Or parents don't want us getting into nutrition or whatever. Okay, well, you're a B plus player. Yeah. Like, that's, you're not, you're how not. are you telling me that that can't impact the reality of how I, I think is, is never one thing. Yeah. More importantly, it's probably not what you want it to be. Hmm. Meaning, if I'm a strength coach, I want the solutions to be to be, to be like to be pushing where, a sled to be where I can and coach. Yes, yeah. I want I want to be the one that carries the football, the separator. I want to be the I want to be the person adding all the value. When Most of the time, particularly in very high level situations, it's it's not what you want it to be. Yeah, and like you have to feel that you're comfortable winning. But somebody else carries the football across yeah. across the goal line, and I say these things not to pander to your football experience. This is just how I talk. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's but it's yeah. but again, like like I think a lot of people can speak that language where it's it's tough not to be the guy carrying the ball, but that's the fucking team part about it, and like it's that's where the the whole system, coach, yeah. parents, priest, karate yeah. sensei, everybody <laughs> is in on this, and to think that that's not elite. Yeah, I want my kid to be elite. Okay, well. Do you let them eat Cheetos? Like, like, yeah. Okay. Well, then let's talk about. Well, it's okay to be a kid. You know, like. Yeah. Okay. There, everything is a communication and discussion. And or, and, and, and you got to combat the personal narratives that go along with that. That's right. And like, so you're dealing with a, every human you deal with is different. That has a different understanding, different perspective. Now you get into a coach that has 20 years under his belt, and a strength coach that has another 25, and a, a PT that has outlasted four coaching staffs. Mm -hmm. And so now, like, now it's just like this. Are they the right people? That's yep. the thing. You can have a whole bunch of good people, and it doesn't mean they're the yeah. right people. I've said this again we, in, when, in, during my time in the NBA. Staffs were like tiny. Yeah. Like we had three. Yeah, we had three, literally three people. Uh, sometimes four, uh, but most of the time three. 
and now you have like eight, nine, fifteen. Like uh, so, the I would say that that team that had a lot of success. There was a team that around that time that was known for um, being like the place that. NBA players would go to get resurrected. Like if they had like history of injuries, if you go to that city, you would be good again. Yeah. And because there was one very, very famous player that that happened with, that's what everybody yeah. would say. It wasn't like a huge number. But I was like, dude, the thing that they do really, really well, even though their model was, I would not consider to be elite from a scientific model. Like this is like weak. This is like, yeah. dude, come on. Like this is really it. Um, but they had all three of their staff were, were on the same page. Yeah. And one plus one equals three. Where you could have like a mega star, a mega star and a goof. The goof is is how that program ends. Like that yeah. that's so um you know, it's everybody is yeah, yeah, it has to be the right people. And it's like it, but I also think like that the power of that is like basic tribe mentality too. If you're not fighting inside, you can fight everybody else. And like I think that bleeds into the professional support on the team as well. Mm. But um, but yeah, no, we so we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there, just um, out of respect for time and everything. Cool. Um, you're the man. Where can everybody find you? Where can people get in contact with you? That kind yeah. of thing. So uh, charlieweingroff.com, Charlie Weingroff on Instagram, C Wagon seventy five because my nickname is Chuck Wagon. Let's go. I mentioned I mentioned earlier you can't give yourself a nickname, but that was given to me in high school. Let's go. Uh, I, I think that's uh, and it's stuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it makes it easy. Yeah, so, particularly um, with an eight hundred pound what else, squat. What else? Too. What else would there be? Like, you know, YouTube, but like everything. Everything is like off my website. And, cool. And and and, 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 and I'll Instagram. I'll link I'll, I'll link all that in the bio of the of the podcast cool. and on some of the posts so everybody know where to find you. But awesome. I greatly appreciate your time. I love the conversation. Awesome. Well yeah. done. Well done. Easy. You're the man.